What is up creatives, this is Tom. So sometimes when talking about cameras, we need to talk about frames that look a little something like this, or we might be talking about lenses that look a little something like this, or occasionally there might be a little triangle floating around really randomly as well. Okay, so we'll stop that, but what I am gonna show you today is how to do some simple motion graphics inside Adobe After Effects. They're perfect for YouTube videos, they're really simple and quick to do. And without further ado, let's jump jump in. Okay, so here we are in After Effects on the same clip and I've already got that dragged into my timeline. Now I know that some people can find After Effects a bit intimidating, so I'm kind of gonna, gonna do my best to just make this as beginner as possible, make it as accessible as possible, and hopefully anyone who, even if you've not used After Effects a ton, you should be able to follow along with this tutorial. So first of all is obviously we need to skip to the frame where I sort of introduce the shape and we're gonna see that round about here. So what we can do is we can just uh, pull up the rectangle tool at the top and we'll give this a fill of solid and we'll minus out a border for now, a stroke. And let's just drag the shape um, on this area here. Press V to bring up our position tool and we can drag that around. I seem to for some reason have some stray shapes there so I'm just gonna delete those. But this is the shape that we're after. You can hold shift to bring up additional properties. So I'm gonna switch over to the position tool but I'm also gonna bring up the scale tool by holding shift S and then also the uh, rotation tool as well. So we can just kind of play around here making this a bit more central in my hands. So I'm also going to use this little plugin over here called Reposition Anchor Point um, to just center my anchor point in uh, the middle of this rectangle, which is obviously what we wanna do. So we can scale this down. And this is our sort of frame that we're gonna want this to uh, start at. So I'm actually gonna rotate that because it looks more appropriate to do it from this side, as you can see. So what we'll do is we'll set a keyframe there for where we want the shape to be at this moment in time and then as you can see my hands sort of come together so I'm actually going to scale that up around here and just move the position over ever so slightly as well. We can also press shift T to bring up the opacity uh, property as well. I'm gonna click a keyframe there and give that a property of zero. So that means that it's um, gonna sort of fade in. We'll click the, click the keyframe and let's have that fading in round about here. Maybe we'll just shorten that a little bit and drag these keyframes over. So now we have the frame animating in as we can see, just like that. Now there's a number of ways to do the next bit, but I actually decided to not opt for sort of really tracking my hands and making it sort of a bit more of a scientific uh, tracking where my hands are and moving the shape accordingly. And I actually just did it just kind of by moving the shape around using a parented layer. I decided that this for the type of motion that I was going for was kind of most appropriate, though of course you could track it if you wanted to do it like that. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead with sort of moving the shape around according to my uh, hands, where my hands are. So we can skip ahead. I'm actually just gonna adjust this opacity down to about 60 on this last keyframe here, just to give this a little bit of a see-through look, as you can see. So we'll skip ahead. We can change the positioning and the rotation here along with the scale to match where my hands are at this moment in time. And now we should have a sort of a the effect getting a little bit more comprehensive as you can see. So let's play that back. You can see that that is already working. So I'm actually just going to uh, increase the sort of complexity of our shape just a little bit. So we can press Command D to duplicate that shape. Um, let's scale this up just a little bit. I'm gonna unlink the scale here, make that just a little bit bigger. And then we can get rid of the fill up here and let's add a stroke just to make that looking a little bit sort of a little bit more uh, technical. Now I can parent this layer to this layer and now if I move the layer below the layer above will move as well and that's obviously what we want to achieve with the layer on top. So I'm gonna click the layer above now as well hit U and just get rid of all of the uh, keyframes for that that layer and it means it will follow it around uh, but I am also just going to copy over that uh, opacity uh, keyframe as well just so we can see that that is all looking pretty good as you can see. 
So I'm just going to adjust this ever so slightly again just to bring down that overall size. You can see that it's looking pretty decent at the moment. There's some finishing touches that we'd obviously need to make to this. But I'm actually going to create a null object now to actually just control the position overall of this shape. So I can parent this layer, the sort of main shape layer, to this null. Now I'll hit the P uh, key to bring up the position uh, keyframe for this property. So we can go along to where we see here. Let's hit the position keyframe and we can skip along, hold command and then arrow to see where uh, my hands are moving and I'm going to shift this down accordingly just like that skip ahead a few frames so as mentioned you could sort of do this by uh, using an actual the actual tracking feature within After Effects but I just found for this technique it was easier to keep it sort of a, a bit more run and gun that's done the sort of uh, most most significant movement of my hand there. So let's just have a little watch of that back. There we go. So you just get a little wobble of my hands. It just helps sort of build the overall effect. Just like that. And then what we can do is uh, we need to sort of go and expand it really large according to my hands as well. So let's put a keyframe in place for the position scale and rotation. And then we can scale that right up. And I have found that you, it doesn't need to be sort of totally um, accurate according to where your hands are because you're sort of doing it in coordination with the uh, with the hands. It just sort of needs to be roughly where your hand position is and the effect will sell. So let's have a look at that now. And as you can see, that is already looking pretty decent. So I'm actually going to, uh, as a bit of a sort of final step for this animation, I'm going to toggle um, motion blur on for this uh, animation. So we'll see how much that affects it as well. Let's have a little look of that back. That is already looking quite a lot better, which is great. Um, so let's sort of go along a little bit here put ad some additional keyframes in and then you can see here my hands sort of uh, move in just a little bit as well let's move over the positioning ever so slightly so it's sort of tracking in and then my hands sort of animate down so, or move move down so we want the animation to match that as well so let's put some keyframes there we can rotate that down move the position down and then we also want to animate the opacity out as well and that should sort of correspond to uh, my movement of my hands we'll hit the uh, copy the animation the uh, opacity animations over on from the first layer paste them onto the second layer and as you can see, that is already working pretty nicely. So let's watch that back. So I think the only area here is where my hands sort of move in this section, but there's no actual movement going on. So we're going to use the top layer again. Let's press P, press a keyframe here. And as you can see, my hands are moving. So we're going to shift that up down down a bit again down a bit again and then my head the uh, sort of overall animation kicks in again but that should just help it just feel like it is actually attached to my hands and that works really nicely I'm actually just going to move these keyframes over ever so slightly as well And then I'm going to move these keyframes back a bit because I just want that sort of uh, fade off of the animation happening a little bit earlier. Just like that. That is the sort of basic structure for the animation done within just a few minutes within After Effects. Now, personally, I feel like the biggest 
or sort of biggest difference you can make to this animation is actually the sound design. So we'll throw a quick bit of sound design, some sound layers. I'm using a UI uh, sound kit that I found online. I'll link that down below in the description and we can have a look at the final product. We need to talk about frames that look a little something like this. We need to talk about frames that look a little something like this or so there we have it. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. If you have any comments or questions, drop them in the comment section and I'll be answering as always. And I'll catch you guys next time. If you have any...